Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Spiritual Transformation. Um, my name is Charles Moulton, and usually when you see my spiritual videos, you probably hear me in the background and see photos flashing by with loads of different effects. But this time, I do want to get this out quickly, uh, which means I will record it and put it online right away and start... Uh, marketing it. Um, it's about spiritual transformation. And those of you who followed my written work and my spoken work and the seminars that I've been teaching and the stuff that I've been doing know that I am a quantum physicist and I believe in quantum mechanics because it's the first thing in history that actually connects science with spirituality. And we are at a crossroads right now. Um, which means that we are re redefining uh, what we have thought was right, what we have thought was true. And uh, we are actually connecting the next world with the world that we're having right now. And uh, you all know that I've been spoken again and again and again and again and again, and they probably say, oh my God, this guy is talking about quantum mechanics again. 99%. 99.9999999999% of the entire universe is empty space. Everything. And that means everything that you have around you right now, in your room, where you're sitting, everything looks solid, but it's not. If you take a very, very high advanced microscope and you go right, right down to the very core, you'll see that atoms are fields and the electrons, protons, neutrons, and all these little things, and the little neutrons and subatomic particles, uh, they have quarks and even the scientists say they have, they have cosmic strings within them. Everything is in vibration. And there's actually uh, some scientists that, that speculate that when you go into the subatomic particles, you're actually going to find in the microcosmos a ma macrocosmos. What does that mean? It means that if you actually go down, right down through the minuscule parts of everything that exists, you'll actually come out at the other end. Now, everything in the universe works according to the same principles. And I was gardening the other day, and there was a little plant I mean, these corona times, we actually have time on our hands, and I have time on my hands to write. I did a, a street concert the other day for my neighbors in the houses, and they looked out their windows, and I put a transistor, a CD radio there, and had some Sinatra and some Frank Sinatra. Uh, and this is actually a review from that concert. It was a great success. I'm going to be on the main page of the little... Uh, uh, the newspaper in the, in the local uh, town where I live. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that, but of course I also have a big house and I have a garden, and I have had the time to uh, do that kind of stuff. And there was this little plant, I think it was a raspberry plant, or cr cranberry plant or something, and it was this small. This small. And underneath, there was like 20 inches of root. And I realize that everything in the universe works that way. And it's with the iceberg, well, the iceberg that hit uh, to the Titanic, um, that was had this little above the water, and it was, of course, huge underwater. Um, and the next day, I was um, cleaning up a, um, a flight of stairs. We have this, these uh, cellar stairs with, with wooden planks. And uh, I spent nine hours working on these these, these plants, taking away these uh, this wood, and there was so much dust and shit and everything underneath underneath these planks. And I actually come came to to think about the same thing that that Buddha was was thinking about um, when he was talking to um, a student, and the student said, um, "Master, I want to." Um, I want to do something that animates my spiritual nature. And he said, take this shovel and clean up your garden. Because when you clean up the, uh, the shit, 
he didn't say shit, but if you clean up the stuff that's in your garden, or the excess garbage that is in your garden, you will actually clean up the uh, dirt of your soul. So, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you that, that everything in the universe works according to the same principles. So, your subconscious is actually much, 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 much bigger than your conscious. And everything that happens in your conscious has its root in the subconscious. And because we are vibrating beings, we vibrate. Everything in the universe vibrates. Our spirits actually work through these vibrations. And the language of these vibrations are the emotions. And Greg Braden, he said, he's a geologist, a very, very good geologist, but he's actually devoted his life to, um, to spirituality. Um, and um, he's traveled to Tibet and Peru, met shamans and old monks, uh, and found out what really made them old. The oldest monks in the world, 120 years old and older, older, what made them old? And he said, two things connect these people. Compassion, lots of compassion, lots of love, and very little stress. So because we are vibrating beings, we are beings filled with these vibrations. Our beings are reflective. What does that mean? What does that mean? We are reflective beings, which means that the emotions we feel, the things that we focus on, they manifest on the outside. Because the, these emotions that we have are the vibrations of our spirits. These are the, these subatomic vibrations. And um, they're actually our emotions. And that's the connection that we have to this world and the next world. So whatever we can imagine in our hearts can actually happen or will happen if we believe, if we believe, truly believe in our hearts something, it must happen in reality, but we must believe it 100%. And in the Gnostic Gospels of St. Thomas, Jesus even talks about that, but it was omitted from the Bible. There were 57 potential Gospels that were up and running for the Bible, but of course, this thought that Jesus presented in his teachings, that um, believing in a prayer, believing as if it has happened, the universe works as a reflective reality. And God is everywhere. That's why when you believe in a prayer, it must happen, because God is with you. It's the energy. God is not just Moses on a cloud, the bearded guy on a cloud. He's everywhere. This spirit could be a woman. The spirit could be a man. The spirit is everything that exists. It's conscious intelligence. Why am I saying this? Because we do live in an extreme time, and I do believe that we are in a time that actually is um, a turning point. Because we are facing challenges. We are facing big challenges in our world right now. But it is a chance for us to look inward and stop the train a little bit. Just go back and think, do I believe what I believe in because society has told me to believe so? Or um, have I judged God as a worldly king? You know, have I judged him according to the principles that somebody has told me are true? Or are the principles that I've been told are true to partisan? And have they to do with power control? Because God is not power control. God is not society. Is never society. And uh, practice this. Practice believing in something where you say, Oh my God, this situation is so difficult. I don't know how I can master this. And whatever the situation is that you think you cannot master, embrace it. Love it. If it's a person you think you can't face, embrace that person in your mind. Bless that person. 
tell that person, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to hate me. You don't need to be angry. You don't need to try to control me because I love you and I am love. And um, I've seen that in many people who have been afraid of people. And I saw that the other day when I was af afraid of a situation or, or uh, my wife actually was in a situation that um, proved to be a little difficult. And um, uh, I said, well, you know, or, or she was afraid of it. And I told her, be love. Don't expect that other person to love you, but be love. And if that other person is in another spiritual place, leave that person in that spiritual place. But be love. Be love. And find the love for love for anything that you like. A movie that you like. Things that you like. Food that you like. Um, surround yourself and penetrate yourself with that love. And um, if you're not afraid of anything, if you're not afraid of a certain thing, and if you love everything that happens or love everything that you are, movies that you've seen, food that you've eaten, people you love, embrace them in your mind, kiss them, tell them nice things. If they don't respond nicely, leave that. Just leave the fact that they don't respond nicely, but respond nicely back. You will see how fast life will change to you. Things will actually turn out for the better because in order to fight, you need two people, always. And if the one person doesn't fight and surrounds with love, the other person will actually eventually uh, become a nicer person. And the, the whole Reality will change. Everything in you will change. Everything that you are, everything that you believe in will come true. Um, and if we do realize that we're not victims, we are not victims, and that the emotional reality, this buzzing energy of the electrons, because everything is empty space and atoms are fields and they vibrate and the emotional reality that is within us is reflective, um, and is the language of the atoms that that actually vibrate, um, we can change corona. And I'm saying this obviously to you. Take one moment of this day. Take one moment of this day to actually imagine how life soon will look like. When we are out of this crisis, for the benefit of all involved. And this is the trick. For the benefit of all involved. Whatever you can imagine can come true. For the benefit of all involved. Happiness for everyone is possible. Imagine what life will be looking like. Set yourself a time window. Or better. And this is even in the Gospel of St. Thomas, the Gnostic, Gnostic Gospel of St. Thomas, which you can actually order online through Amazon. As if it were true right now. Imagine the headlines. Corona is over. Imagine the headlines. Tell yourself, the schools are open again. Normality has returned. The shops are open, the kindergartens are open, the, the death rate is, is over, uh, people walking in the streets, people embracing, people going on vacation, you know, as if it were true. And happiness for everyone. War actually ceasing. Don't tell yourself, oh, it's not possible. No, if it's possible in your mind, in your soul, in your emotional reality, it is true. Um, and I'd like to end this uh, little presentation of mine, um, which I hope you will give a little thumbs up for. Um, if everything is emotional, love is the only rule of the universe. Love, faith, truth, fidelity, family, uh, hope, um, embracing, kissing, loving is the only reality and the only reason why we are here is to remember that, and that love is God, and love is conscious love. 
um, then I will say that making love is the tool in which we create our children and show each other love. And there's no thing in the world that is as much love as making love. If you have a spouse, if you have a partner, make love to that partner and see yourself as a quantum being making love to your partner. Meld and bond with your wife or husband. Make love to your partner tonight. And keep in mind, there's a wonderful scene out of The Lawnmower Man where actually Jeff Fahey plays this guy that becomes this incredible intelligent uh, creature and he goes right into to the net. Uh, to what became the net, and he goes into the computer web. But that's a different story. But what he there's this wonderful picture where he blends with another girl, and they become one. Try that when you're making love to your spouse faithfully. See yourself as a vibrating conscious intelligence of love, and see what happens. It's an exhilarating feeling because it's much more than just physical. It's you actually becoming one with, with, that, with that person. Two people, two souls becoming one. And if you see sex as something like that, it is the mirror of the next world. It is the mirror of why we are here. It's the reason why we are here, to understand that we might be separate in this world. But in the other world, we are individual manifestations of one eternal intelligence. And all the religions and everything that is in the whole world are just different perspectives of one mountain. It's like this mountain in Italy where we're all standing around, you're, you, you look at this mountain in Italy, in the Alps, and you're walking around it, and you're actually seeing the mountain from different perspectives, but it looks different from every single perspective because it has three peaks. And the religions are like that. It all leads to the same top, but it's all the same mountain, you know, and that's Christianity, it's Islam, it's Hindu, it's it's Shinto, it's all these, it's all these different, even Buddha, even Buddhist, but Buddhist never talks of God, God. Buddha never talked of God, but, but he talked about the spiritual experience of God, and he does talk about reincarnation, so um, it's, it's the center of God, but just think about that, you know, um, think about that making love and the result of making love is our children, which is actually the most beautiful future in the world. You know, children and, and the hope that they have and the honesty they have and the innocence they have and the truth that we have. We should respect our children. We should respect them in every single way. We should ensure that the future of our children when we leave this planet is secure and that they go out into the world with, with a sense of positive self. We should respect the children more than we respect anything. So, having said that, we make love to create children, but we also make love to show the love in our hearts to other people. You know, become one. Think outside the nine dots. Think of outside the social structure, because I believe in my heart, in my soul, I believe that society is just a structure. We are spiritual beings and we're here to help each other and love each other. And see yourself as a spiritual being that is capable of changing this corona crisis and opening up society again. Positive. Fill yourself every morning and every evening with positive transformation, positive information, positive manifestation as if it, it already has happened. 
And those are my words to you. Um, I hope that you will uh, you will take these words to heart. Um, check out my channel. Also check out the the uh, um, the videos that are online. Um, my wife Tanya has great videos of mine from my street concert. Um, check those out as well. They're actually under the name Rolling Down the River. And um, take care of yourself. God is love. And you are love. Rock and roll.